I'm so happy that I claimed who I am for being able to name like what I'm going through. This is why people didn't always understand you. And this is why you were misled or mislabeled. Welcome to Deeply Well, a soft place to land on your journey. I'm Debbie Brown, and this is a podcast for those that are curious, creative, and ready to expand on your journey of higher consciousness and self-care. This is where we heal. This is where we become. Welcome to the show. All right, today's show. Ah. We have a very special guest on the show today, and my intention for this episode is to really dive into what it is to live with self-mastery. I'm a big believer that being on this journey, there is always, always, always deeper to go. And that tends to be where once we surrender to it, some of the fun and the creativity can really come to life in the way that we choose to experience what it is being alive and experience our spiritual curriculum. Today's show, I have a master. I have an incredible, incredible guest joining us today. Ah, Layla Delia is a best-selling author, an educator, and a spiritual writer. She's a certified spiritual practitioner and the founder of Vibrate Higher Daily School. She is leading seekers to self-empowerment and a life of more grace and high vibrations. Her best-selling book, Vibrate Higher Daily, Live Your Power, spiritual writings, teaching, speaking, and social media presence are guiding seekers all around the globe. Through her lyrical and organic writing, teaching style, and experiences, Layla enlivens spiritual seekers looking to live with more intuition, empowerment, higher purpose, and vibrations, confidence, grace, and subconscious mind reprogramming. Mm. Her work is a response to her journey and to the current vibrational state of the world that we live in, navigate, and journey through together. My sister, welcome to the show, Layla. Thank you, sweet sister Debbie, for having me. I am so excited about this conversation, as I am all of ours, but this is in front of... <laughs> we be talking. <laughs> we be talking. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, my God. I so, I so love that about us. Like, you know, some people, it's just you were kind of like born to talk to each other. <laughs> mm, I love that. That is perfect. That is, that's it. Yeah. Born to talk to each yeah. other. Yeah, I'll, I'll look yeah. up sometimes. Like we'll be, we'll be like chewing on some thoughts together, yeah. and I'll look up and I'm like, oh, it's been three hours. We've been on the phone for three hours easily, <laughs> and just flowing the entire time. Ah, uh, yeah. Layla, I've been, I've been really looking forward to this conversation um, for so many reasons, but especially because you know when I thought of this newest season of the podcast, yeah. those have been rocking with this show for the last three and a half, four years that I've been doing it, everyone has been going so deep, at least from the responses I've been getting from those of you that that share, which I'm so grateful for those shares and the mm -hmm. expansive feedback that you give for each episode. But I think we've reached a point for those that really connected to the journey seriously to find new ways, new tools, new techniques to go even deeper. And one of the things that especially you and I always talk about is surrendering to the understanding that even the things that you have mastered, there's deeper to go. There's new facets to see it through. Yeah. So I think before we dive into all of that, I would love to start with saying, how is your spirit right now? What are you currently savoring in your life? Oh, I'm savoring slowing down slow living and mm. just being able to be in the process of this shift happening. And I'm going through an intense shift mm. and I'm so present with it. I'm, I'm the, I'm mothering myself through it. Mm. I'm my healer through it. I'm my nurse through it, my midwife through it. And I'm just being so hands on with myself at this moment through mm. this shift. And 
that process has made it such a completely com such a completely different shift to where it feels like, oh, my team is with me. You know, my my when I say my team, my support team, first off is me. Like yeah. all hands are on deck. And so it feels so grounding and good going through this shift. And and I have you, of course, you mm -hmm. know, just having beautiful sisters to um, you know, to bounce thoughts and experience off of. It, it's really beautiful. So I'm savoring being able to slow down and journey in grace. Yeah. 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 Something that that you shared with your community and and you've talked about in your book is just you know, really being on this path for quite a while, you yeah. know, you came into your awakening, you came into your understanding that there was more, that there were more expansive ways of being alive and you chose a path of service very early on. Yeah. So a lot of, you know, I think shifting is something that you probably have a lot of muscle memory in, right? It's like mm. your innate way of being is to kind of surrender yeah to the feeling of that intuition guiding you towards something new, different, more. Yeah. When you are like in a, in a moment like this, how do you know it's time to shift? How, how are you made aware that, okay, here we grow again, you know, <laughs> like this it. is, yeah. let's lean into it. Yeah. For me, and almost, I would, probably say the person watching this right now, <laughs> most of us, um, when when your life feels the most wonky, when your life feels the most vulnerable, and when it feels like everything is like not working out, falling mm. apart, that's exactly what's supposed to be happening because you're expanding. And so that, that shell that you've been in, that mm. container that has held you purposely um, has to expand now. It has to dissolve. It has to burst open. And so just going through the gravity of that, that's when I know mm. every time. And I'm like, oh, okay. Or if it hasn't happened in a while, I can almost track it and clock it. Now I'm like, oh, clock, like clockwork, it's about time. Mm. And another feeling, if you don't have that, it's like you have this immense amount of what can appear to be boredom, where everything just seems to be like crickets, mm. you know, just it's really like, okay, I'm here, I'm existing, what's happening? It's that very, restlessness that kind of starts to creep in. It does. Yeah. You're like, oh, you know, and so that those two ways are how I know. Yeah. Yes. And what so, does that process look like? And I, I want to get like, okay, let me, let me start here. I remember like years ago, I had gone probably 10 years ago, I had gone to this event and Marianne Williamson was speaking. And at the time she said something that felt incredibly revolutionary to me. She was mm -hmm. talking about how she approached feelings of depression. Yeah. And she was saying that she recognized that it's just kind of, you know, the warning signal that's letting you know that it's time to yeah. work on self. It's time yeah. to hermit. It's time to yeah. process. It doesn't have to always have um, some of the gravity to it that it's presented with always. Yeah. Um, and I remember she said that she would kind of like build herself a little cave almost. Mm -hmm. Like when she felt those feelings creep in, she'd say, okay, let me stock my fridge. Let me get, you know, let me clean everything. Let me get yeah. the things, you know, that bring me comfort nearby. And it just, I remember at the time that I heard that, that was incredibly powerful for me. And I began yeah. to approach every time I'd have an experience like you're talking about like that. And I'd yeah. say, all right, well, I'm going to book a spa appointment, have that on calendar ready to go. Yes. I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to have the tools that I need nearby. I'm going to have, you know, the oils. I'm going to have, you know, the tinctures, all the things that I know yeah. my nervous system craves when it's under duress. Yes. And then I'm going to find things to kind of pack in my creativity. If I'm not really feeling inspired, let me leave some paper around with some colored pencils, some, yes. you know, I like making collages. So let me like get a little stack of mags and some scissors. Yep. So for your process, what does that look like for you? And, and what are some ways that those listening can say, oh, that's what that feeling is inside. Okay. How do I maximize this? Yeah. I get very, very present and when I say present, like all throughout the day, like I'm on, I'm, and when I'm going through it, because I understand my body is so sensitive and most of us are highly sensitive. Yeah. Sometimes we don't realize it because we're tuning it out with other distractions in our life, which is a, another important conversation, <laughs> um, you know, yeah. of like the things that are 
are taking away that sensitivity that's so necessary, mm. right? And so it's okay to feel. And so I allow myself to feel whatever is coming through so I can know that a shift is happening. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a navigator, like being able to feel, you know, just the, you know, the waves, you know, you know, look at them and understand the weather that's coming in and being yeah. able to forecast, oh, I need to do this, do that, like you say. So for me, I have to always turn to rest and I have to turn to body work. Massage mm -hmm. is like, mm -hmm. yeah, like I just had Oof. the best shiatsu mas massage this person was like rolling my body in ways I didn't even know was possible and it was like completely Talk different dirty to me right exactly yes. and I was like <laughs> resurrect me through this change I'm going through and I because what can happen <laughs> what can happen is that it can feel like a midlife crisis or even mm -hmm. a thing now called quarter life crisis mm -hmm. and it could feel like that but then when you realize oh this is just another shift yeah you know this is just another awakening or ascension like whatever your language is for it yeah it's it's something and we can't deny that these things happen almost yeah. like milestones in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so just allowing myself to say, I know I'm headed for this milestone. What can I do to prepare? And another mm -hmm. thing is having my my tool bag, flower essences. I keep mm -hmm. them in my, I, I joke a lot now, like inner within myself because my purse looks so different now than it used to look <laughs> like, <laughs> like back in the day. And like now, and I'm, you know, I will, and you know, like I've done this with you, like we could be out at a function or, you know, out of town or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I have this and I have yes, that, yes, like pull out yes. medicines and herbs and, and tinctures. And it's just like, it's, it gives, it keeps me so grounded. So plant yeah. medicine, I stick with that. I stay with that. I listen to music that helps my mm -hmm. brain waves be mm -hmm. in a supportive space and create firm, healthy boundaries of, of not just energy from people, but things of like what can come into my ear gate, mm -hmm. eye gate during this very vulnerable time. Mm -hmm. And knowing that it's a vulnerable time. And, and with that, if I'm in a vulnerable time, I really have to mother and be mindful of how I'm authoring my thoughts mm -hmm. and my words mm -hmm. and my beliefs during this time. And so I'm just so hands-on. And so now like, I talk about in the book uh, that become the chemist of your life so that mm. you can understand your life is your laboratory and certain <sighs> things together make, you know, potions and certain compounds together are beautiful, but other compounds together are poisons and toxins. Yeah. So just really understanding that. And then, and all this helps to inform how you take care of your vessel, which is carrying the mm. gift and this next expansion. Mm. Yeah. I love that so, so much. One of my teachers kind of described it as like run experiments on yourself. Yeah. You know, like be willing yeah. to experiment with yourself, like even in those thoughts and actions. Like if I made this decision differently, yeah. let's just see what could come. Yeah. You know, and yeah. then kind of we get to adapt from there. Mm, adapt. That word is like, that's the word. Mm. That's the word adapt. Because it's gonna, it's gonna cause you to adapt so much. Something that that you were talking about, and this is something we really live by and talk about all the time, but I haven't talked about it too much on the show yet. Um you know, there's a lot of phrases that are getting thrown around a lot right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a lot of a lot of people are like, I'm an empath. I'm highly sensitive. Mm. A lot are. Yeah. But it's yeah. also they're terms that I think um, are not always fully translated. Yeah. And I, I would love to talk about that with you for a minute, because you and I are both empathic and we are both like very highly sensitive, yes. like yes. very high, like. We can't be in toxic rooms because yeah. we'll absorb like yeah. the energy that's present. So yeah. some, you know, one thing about you and I, we'll pop up and we'll be in the mix <laughs> and then you won't hear from us for months. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. But, yeah. you know, that that piece, that's something when I first learned of that phrase um, early in my journey, I really rejected that label highly mm -hmm. sensitive because mm -hmm. I didn't fully understand what it meant. Yeah. And as someone that had lived a life that I felt like I don't look like the things that I've been through. Yeah. So sometimes people assume things are easier than they've actually been. Mm. I really rejected that because yeah. I would say, I'm not sensitive. Yeah. You don't know my life. Do you know what I've walked through? I'm not sensitive. And I didn't yeah. really understand that it meant like 
deep sensitivity of your physical body, like yes. on a cellular level, the way yes. that your body responds to stress, the way that your body responds yeah. to toxicity. But yeah. that alone is such a profound healing journey when you can understand mm. that, you know, some things that may be happening to you physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, um, mm. there's a whole other category of experience you're having that could be massively different yeah. from other people. Yes. Can we speak to that? Mm -hmm. Can you speak on what that journey is for you kind of being someone that's highly sensitive, someone that is yeah. incredibly intuitive and how you adapt your needs yeah. around that? Oh, absolutely. It was it was helpful for me as well because I had language for what yeah. I was experiencing. And like the adage goes, name it to tame it. Mm. And so it helps to know, okay, well, I have a sensitivity to stimuli and to energy and to people's fields and even to people's thoughts. Yeah, Like I can, I can literally be in a room and feel someone's thoughts. But when I was younger, I didn't know what to do with that. Like, what do you, growing up in the eighties and, and nine, like yeah. There was just no there was context, no language. no language, no community, no support for any of this. So it kind of swept, got swept under the rug. So we're, our generation is the ones who were awakening to it yeah. in a way of like, oh, we're, we're, we brought the support online. So now this next generation and the generations to come, yeah. we'll have language for it and community and support and, and a path already paved to say it's okay to land here and to be mm. like this. But I, for the life of me, I felt so awkward for a huge majority of my life. It was a lot of masking. Yeah. It was a lot of fitting in because, oh, no one else is feeling this. All right. You know, I'm just keeping it to myself. But at the same time, I'm reading the room. Mm -hmm. I'm, I know we shouldn't be here. I know I shouldn't be here for sure. But going along with it. So there's a lot of healing I had to do through even that type of thing of, of not being true to who I was mm. because no one else could understand it. So I just kind of just buried it. Right. And so now, but living in that authenticity, authenticity, um, and in my power with it changed the game. Like mm. I'm so happy that I claimed who I am and I'm mm. proud of it. I'm happy. You know, I'm, I'm full of gratitude for being able to name like what I'm going through. Yeah. And even, yeah. you know, even, even yeah. on a deeper level of like recently <laughs> finding out other things about myself of like, okay, you're on the spectrum and it's okay. It's okay to be, you know, high functioning and on the spectrum. And I never understood that before. I love you. Wow. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. And so for me, understanding, well, this is why you had that gift. This is why you had these feelings. This is why you could perceive things. This is why people didn't always understand you. And this is why you were misled or mislabeled. And, you know, thinking back far as like kindergarten, you know, being put back in kindergarten because they didn't know what was wrong with me. But now that I understand that it wasn't anything wrong, it was just different, right? And it was just something different. And so being able to share that even in this space, this is my first time, as you know, sharing this publicly. And, but I'm at home here, you know, I'm at home here. My mother left the planet not knowing because I, I did have a later in life as, as obviously um, diagnosis of, of, um, you know, of being on the spectrum. So it's different for me. And then, you know, the way I see energy uh, I have a niece who also, you know, is on the autism spectrum and she is such a joy to our family. And for so long, I connected with her, you know, <laughs> I connected with my niece on such a deep level. And I was always like, this is my baby. This is my baby. But now I understand. Now I understand why I truly felt like that. Mm -hmm. So it gave me this new, for one, a new identity and I'm like, well, how cool is that? Like, I'm, I embrace it. You know, there was grief a little bit when I first found out just, be, you know, because I was like, I went through denial. I'm like, there is absolutely no way. And then I had to understand what highly functioning meant. Yeah. Um, but also being careful of that word because anyone with highly, who's highly sensitive or 
who is on the spectrum or who is empathic, uh, people, because you can function sometimes at a high capacity, mm -hmm. you're not given the grace to also have your sensitivities. And I think, you know, that's why a lot of people now want to remove the term highly functioning yeah. when it comes to autism, because it's sometimes gives people a false sense of, you know, capacity when sometimes it's not there. So, um, so yeah, so just energy, being empathic, highly sensitive. I think that once you can realize whoever you are and however you identify, that it's okay. And to just journey in grace and understand that this is how your unique spirit chose to be in this type of body, this lifetime. And that body is necessary. That sensitivity is necessary. And learning how to master it. One thing for me when I was younger, uh, I was very highly reactive my feelings would get hurt so easy. Mm. I would get triggered so easy. I would pop off so easy. Mm. I would just be like, oh, okay, that's what we're doing so easy. You know, match the energy so easy. And that was, as you know, for my types, that's the absolute worst you could do is to match energy, take even more on. Oof. So, you know, being able now to, to stay in the practice of mindfulness and vibration and meditation, um, all these things just really help speak, you know, to, to who and what that was. And I'm curious for you, like, how did you deal with it? Like, how did you deal with your sensitivity also coming through so much trauma, um, let alone, you know, just the times that we're in? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I need a <laughs> tissue. Um, oh, okay. I just need it. I need to take root in that because this is yeah. something that we've been talking about. Yeah. And, um, I just really want to express like how much, just how much I honor the gift that you were giving so many by choosing to share your experience uh, yeah. right now, because this is a piece of things that are kind of, I feel that, you know, these conversations around mental health and spiritual development have been really intensifying, especially since 2020, but really in the last yeah. couple of decades for the ability for children to be um, have diagnoses that are supportive to them being able uh, to live a life that allows them to maximize their possibilities. Mm. And something that is happening right now is that there is a huge wave of Generation X and generation and millennials that are getting very late diagnoses. And yeah. there are men and women across the country that are awakening to finding out that they have neurodivergence yeah. in a variety of ways, um, with many being, you know, what is at least right now, I think this is still the correct terminology. It's changing pretty rapidly, but yeah. being on this, the spectrum of autism. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people are not getting that diagnosis, as especially women yeah. and girls, until now like 30s, 40s, mm. 50s, 60s. Yeah. And it is – it's so powerful yeah. to just have – an understanding of who you are and who mm. you've been mm. and to yeah. understand that so many of the things that you may have been fighting with yourself over in life or, yeah. you know, reactions that you're having internally that other people aren't seeing ways that you're trying to understand the world around you mm. that other people are completely unaware of. Yeah. And to just know that you're perfectly designed and this whole time you just weren't giving the phrasing and you weren't giving the support yeah. to be able to be your full whole self. And so, um, mm. Mm. I'm just so, yeah. Thank you. We are just, <laughs> yeah, I, it's you're being your full whole self. Like that's, mm. if there was anything I could look back on, if, anything out of all the things I can regret of my past. That's the only one. Because everything else I understand was purpose. You know, it was prerequisite. Yeah. Lessons. It was, it was boot camp. But not being able to be my full self, that's the one where I understand that that had the most impact for me, honestly, mm -hmm. even over the trauma Mm. over domestic violence, like, mm. like really over domestic violence, mm. you know, over being lost in these streets, really like being turned out, like in so many different ways, you know, through predator relationships, 
but it was not being able to be my full self. And I know had I had the language and the knowledge, there's no way I would have been, you know, made a lot of the decisions that I made or put up with a lot that I put up with and not having like any type of guidance, like, oh, there you go. You're out there. Figure it yeah. out, you know? Yeah. But we figure it out. Like, thank goodness I figured it out. And I give thanks for that survival mechanism that my soul came here with to just be thrown into the deep, mm. you know, into the deep and and teaching myself how to swim in it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How does that feel in this moment? What is changing and shifting for you with just the deepened understanding of how your body and brain works? Yeah, a lot of it is this this new, like I was saying when we began our conversation, this embodiment of my indwelling healer has just mm. completely was like, okay, now you're ready, right? And mothering myself, now you're ready. Now you're ready to receive my love and my care. And so I have been loving myself and nurturing myself because my mother's not here. You know, she, again, she she left this, this realm before she knew. And I know she would be here holding space for me completely. And so my grandmother Layla as well, my grandmother Delia as well. And so I think that for me, the number one thing that I was clear I had to do was to nurture and, and love myself and mother mm -hmm. myself through it. So it's feeling very nurturing and it's feeling very, I'm learning myself through it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, there's probably still because it's fresh, <laughs> you know, the awareness of it. It's days where I'm like, oh, okay, this is why I'm seeing this like this, or this is this is what's happening, or this is why I need to do this. And I give thanks for, and I know you said this to me in a conversation about being at a certain level to receive it now, mm. you know, that I had done enough work to where this is the embodiment that I experienced through that. Mm. And I'm grateful that I did that. Like I laid so much groundwork in healing and loving myself and knowing how to journey in grace. And so the things that I wrote in this book, the things that I write, like I really write from such a real place mm -hmm. that it just, it's, they're like medicine words and they're words of, they're not just words like, oh, I just have to write something to post online. <laughs> no, this is like channeled intuitive words that yeah. are helping me, but also that I know that are helping other people as well. And so it's feeling very supported. And I'm just so grateful because when I first found out, it was like, whoa, like that that divine, sacred whirlwind, that tornado, you know, like mm. Dorothy and the Wiz, like, okay, where am I? Like, what is this? Um, so yeah, just finding this. So in that that movie, The Wiz is just my ultimate favorite spiritual teaching movie. Mm. Um, but yeah, just coming back home to myself. Yeah. And, and knowing that I was always home, but having the awareness that I'm mm. home is different now. This like visual that I feel that I'm getting and everything that you're just saying is like also like when you come into new information mm. about yourself and about your life, you know, there is a grief that flows with that, right? Yeah. Like who, who would I have been if I had had the support? Who would I have been if I had known there was a different choice or, right. you know, for all of us, I think there is this grief that can come in with some massive breakthroughs and shifts that come forward. Yeah. And on, you know, if we're looking at this through yin and yang, light in the dark, dark in the light, yeah. continuously, continuously, there's always this balancing that happens cosmically where mm -hmm. there's also this opportunity to really jump back into your path into your past and heal yes. those ages, like yes. to sit in thought and in meditation and prayer around pivotal moments in your life where you didn't have the information you have now and yeah. extend that grace then. Um, as you're walking yeah. through this part of your journey now and this new expansion, this um, just really divine, glorious uncovering mm. How has the healing felt in that for you? And is there opportunities that have been kind of presenting to like 
love that little Layla. Like go back mm. and hold that little Layla or just experience even the creative gifts that maybe weren't noticed or weren't appreciated that were part of the way that you're designed. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I would say all of the above. It's my son allows me to play and I, it's something very interesting about our relationship because he brings out my inner child mm -hmm. and my inner child just has so much fun with him. And what's what, what started as me playing with him when he was a toddler in a way of showing him how to play, you know, just a, one day he was, he was being really rough with his action figures, like me to them. And I was like, oh, oh I want to teach him in this moment like how to be on a team, like how to work together, mm. you know, like let's make, what if you're action heroes or he tells me not to call them toys, they're uh, figures, action figures. Okay. Mm. And so, so let me be politically <laughs> figures, correct mom. as a boy mom. Not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be correct. Um, so his action figures, like what if he learns how to work on a team? And so that was such a pivotal, I mean, five minutes in, he was like a completely different, having a completely different supportive experience with himself. Mm. Right. And so in that moment, while I was teaching him, I was like, oh, but this is fun. Like I'm, I was on the floor with him. And ever since that moment, I was so mindful of he needs play. Mm -hmm. And I was already aware that little Layla, you know, is feeling some things about what she experienced when she was younger and not having full range to just be who she was. Mm -hmm. And so in that moment, that feeling, I was like, I want to generate this more because he enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And so we continue to just have playtime together. And even till now, he's 14 now, and we still do the same thing. Like our relationship is just so unique in, in a way of like we play. I'm, I'm mama, you know, mama, is, you know, number one, but we we play and that really allows me to just be free in who I am. So that is, is having playtime. Uh, my daughter as well, like we, I get to really with her, my inner teenager mm -hmm. is there with her and my young adult self. And it's like I already got through mama phase and she's she's 25 now. So it's like I can hey, have Hey India. Hey India. <laughs> <laughs> so I can have <laughs> I can have different levels of expression with her. And with her, I'm aware that being able to be my younger self and mindful like you're your younger self, but you're your mindful younger self is is a good friend to her, you know, is a sister to her. And I'm so aware that mm. at the same time, all these different things are going on and it's so multidimensional. And so in that way, I feel really full. And then as mama, they really are so, such supportive children. Like they really are like she she brings me tinctures. She, you know, they give massage, like whatever mm -hmm. is necessary. And this was even before the diagnosis. But it's it's like even now it's become like, oh, things make sense. You know, so we're feeling really yeah. together as a unit, really supportive as a unit. And I give thanks. I give so much thanks for the children that I incarnated onto this planet with, like, because they are, whew, they are such spiritual giants. And I'm so grateful that we recognize each other. And we said, mm. okay, this is, this is how we're going to do it this lifetime. But I'm clear that your soul is, is mm. mastery. Your soul is mastery. So even that's how I parent, like, I'm not parent, like you're, you're a, a <laughs> subservient, you know, you, yeah. you are a spiritual master and you incarnated mm. as a child, my child this time. So mm. I honor you. And it's just so beautiful to express mm. that in family dynamics. And it's allowing me because I'm in this dynamic in this this type of community at home, it feels so supportive. And it didn't always feel like that. You know, when I was younger, yeah. it was like, yeah. woo, trying to figure it out. And of course, having spiritual, spiritual, spiritual giants in my life, but without that missing piece, mm. it, again, it was just like, you know, they did the best they could and they did a really good job. Yeah. I have to say they did a really yeah. good job. Even, you know, people in my family who I was at odds with for some reason of them judging me, like, you know, when I went on my healing journey or when I was awkward and different, like they did a really good job in mm -hmm. making me not feel okay with myself because that really was also in the pot of like why I'm going on self-discovery, you know? Mm -hmm. 
I'm not okay agreeing with you that I'm different and awkward, right? And now I know why they saw something different in me, but none of us had the language. So I have compassion. Mm. You know, none of us understood why and none of us understood why I thought the way I did. So I have compassion for them. And to this day, what's so interesting is that they're calling me for advice. They've been calling me for advice. They've come around. You know, it's completely loving. It was always loving, but you know, um, but it's like a deeper respect for who I am. And yeah, that was before the diagnosis, you see. So it's like yeah. your I, I just know that your gift carries you in places where you may not feel me now, you may not get it now, but it's gonna make sense one day. Right. Oof. Just give me time Oof. to get on my journey, to heal to get past mm. some things, to set my life up how it needs to be, and you'll see exactly who I am. But mm. in the meantime, I don't have to prove anything to you. You know, and that's where... Powerful. Yeah. That was the most powerful, powerful thing that I could have done is like, let them go. Like, release yeah. anyone who made me feel like I was awkward, I was different, I was defiant, whatever it was, and just to keep moving on my journey. And I, the more I kept moving, it was like this hand pulling me where that hand was so much more beautiful and it was just so healing and cathartic for me that I kept going towards that and away from this other energy, whether it was friends, family, whoever it was, relationships. Yeah. Um, and that's like, I just wanted more of that in my life. And I'm still moving towards that this divine guidance, like I'm still mm. moving towards there. And so I feel like that's really what's informing and guiding me through. Mm. 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 Yeah. I mean, my God, you gave us a feast just now. <laughs> so many things to deepen in and yeah. in what you just shared. Mm. You know, there there's a couple thoughts that were coming to me as you were talking. I, I was reading recently, um, I just loved the way that they phrased this, where they mm. said, you know, even your even the villains in your life have a gift for you. Mm. You know, both yeah. both your villains and your heroes in this story that you're living yeah. have gifts, right. you know, and to what you said, it's like that shift in awareness is so powerful. And depending on what the experience is, it doesn't always feel possible. And it could take many, many, many steps, surrenders, and practicings to get to that point. But mm -hmm. when we understand that like everything is a catalyst to become, yeah. even what we can perceive as the worst things. Um, and that is not mm -hmm. to minimize from some of the things <sighs> that can be experienced because there is a darkness on this planet. Yeah. You know, everything, yeah. there are some experiences that, that some have that it's like that, that can never be scrubbed clean. And I, mm -hmm. my God, like, yeah. I get that. Yeah. And with a lot of work and surrenderings, sometimes there are possibilities to relate to even the most devastating circumstances in a way that alleviates suffering um, yeah. for us, you know? Mm. And another thing I was thinking, it, it I remember I was doing, um, I had a really, really um, painful experience with someone in my life that was in my life for a very long time. And mm. You know, in part, of, I, I understood immediately that I was being asked to be brought to a new depth of compassion. Um, mm. But it was still kind of like the balancing of that sacred rage <laughs> mixed yeah. with, for me, it was always I went directly to compassion and I would always kind of bypass the anger in things. Mm. And so, anywho, it, that was part of a, a long process. But I remember I was doing this um, Akashic Records reading a long, long time ago, and we were talking about in the spiritual world and on a karmic level what that dynamic was mm. between myself and that person. And they were like, yeah, but you both like really signed up for this yeah. and they were meant to teach you through pain. You asked mm. for that. Mm. And they had this visual of that actually meant it kind of really helped me on my journey to forgiveness and acceptance. And they yeah. said, when you get back to the spirit realm, you're going to give each other high fives. Like the yeah. second you see that once you both cross over, it's going to be like, what? We did it. Yes. And now that I'm so far removed from the pain points of that experience for me and, and the yeah. trauma of that experience, I am so 
grateful for that experience in a way that I I still haven't amassed the words to convey yeah. because I realized that for me and whatever mm-hmm. I signed up for in this life, I could only learn it that way. Yeah. And when I Ooh. chose to learn it and when I chose yes. not to be kind of, as Rumi would say, you know, in that mm-hmm. field where there's no right or wrong, mm-hmm. when I chose to not be in that field of judgment of assessing myself as the good person and them yeah. as the bad person in it, yeah. regardless of what the optics were, it yeah. freed me. It freed me to the depths of my soul and I can never yeah. forget that freedom. Yeah. Um and so I look at that and I say, God, that I sure did choose a rough way to learn it, but mm. wow, thank you, God, for that learning. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Who I've become with that learning. Ooh. Mm-hmm. That part. Yeah. 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 Because you're you're becoming something through it. Yeah. And it's like when you can and now having the mindfulness and awareness and even the language for for people mm-hmm. maybe not now maybe going through something and they feel like what is going on but if you can just hold on to who you're becoming in it yeah that's the medicine and that's what's going to change the game on how you come out and Mm. that was that right there like Mm. when we're reactive like how i used to be i used to just be like okay you know just Mm -hmm. and when you're reactive every the every Thing somebody does, every wind blow, every sound is like you're moving a different direction. That is not a way to live. It's so mm. exhausting. And it you don't deserve that. Like we deserve better. We deserve to be mindful in our situation to take mm. our time through the chaos, to understand what's going on, to understand like who this person is, like to even mm. give ourselves grace and time to understand, okay, you are the adversary, but I chose this. Mm-hmm. This is a lesson. Le- le- I'm a, I'm in such deep cover that I'm thinking you're really the enemy, but you're really the teacher, mm-hmm. right? This is really a lesson. And this, not everyone is ready for this conversation though, you know? And yeah. it's yeah. it's a deep conversation of learning how to be human and mm-hmm. how does a soul come into this human <laughs> body and leave with compassion and love and light, right? And leave yeah. better, yeah. right? And then leave... Yeah their energy signature on the earth, light and powerful and something that can be useful, purposeful, right? But yeah. when when we're ready for that conversation, our lives expand into a completely different place. And then we understand, oh, I have more power over my life than I realized. Yeah. No matter how, what cards I'm dealt, no matter what, you know, how it looks on the onset, whatever this 3D reality labels it as or how it it, it shows up, mm. I have power. Mm. And that's what's important about it, you know? Mm. And that goes to like what we're saying. You don't, once you get to there, you don't look like what you've been through. Yeah. It's just like yeah. you start to embody this radiance and this light and wisdom. It's just, mm. it has a look. <laughs> it has a look and a vibe and a feel, you know? Yeah. Because I look at me post and then after, whoo. <laughs> I mean, I, it's funny because like what I thought was like yeah. cute back then and beautiful, <laughs> I was like, oh, I can see it now. You know, I can see her stress. You know, yeah. she was doing the best she could. Yeah. I give her grace, but it's a look. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a it's a whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She she showed up under duress. She showed yeah, up well, right? but in comparison to what's possible. Yeah. yeah. You really, really, really see that. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you say, I'm letting it go. Like I'm not, I'm no longer harboring, yeah. Like and holding that animosity, yeah, and that I'm not energy. That. I don't mm-hmm. know. I cannot. You die a thousand deaths, right? Yes, it's like you prolong yes. the injury, yeah. And and also, you know, like it was really coming forward, like the the concept of being a divine co-creator, yeah. Because we create right. even sometimes the harm. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. like, what are we actively connecting ourselves to? What yeah. are we actively choosing um, to be in communion with? Yeah. And I think that goes for literally everything. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I it's like you have to be so committed to fiercely editing like mm. yourself, your life, your process at all times and mm. surrendering, detaching, Ooh. saying, okay, I'm going to let that go. I'm going to release that. Yeah. Even sometimes holding on to the friendships, the relationships, the yeah. job, the this, the that, when yeah. you know there is a call yeah. to stop, yeah. you know, there is a call to let something end, Yeah. but you don't. At that point, mm. you're creating your reality. Right. You're co-creating 
the pain in your life. You're right. co-creating the distress in your life. Yeah. Um, and it just, it's all such a ripple effect. It has an effect on everything. It's not as simple as, as trying to be stoic or saying, I'll endure, yeah. I'll endure. And that yeah. makes me righteous. <laughs> it's like, you're yeah. also killing your body. Yeah. You know, women and yeah. men, especially, mm. especially women mm. of color, yeah. die a lot faster of a wide spectrum of diseases yeah. that don't typically happen to other people. Yeah. And if you look into, you know, the foundation of that person, yeah. a lot of times it's not, not creating freedom when you're called to yeah. for yourself. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. It's, it's stress related yeah. and toxic related and, living a life that is not authentic to yourself. Yeah. I can relate to that in a way of I had my body and this uh, this is this is like this may take us in a different direction, I'm not sure, but what I do know is that when you do not live a life authentic to you, yeah. your body becomes susceptible susceptible? Mm -hmm. <laughs> susceptible to illness. Yes. To compromise. Yes. And it's yes. so important yes. to be in this vessel in your authentic Ooh. signature, right? So it's not yeah. just like, oh, I'm authentic. Like it's it's a catchphrase. No, I have to be who I am. I have to live and breathe and eat and serve who I am. If not, mm. I'm jeopardizing my body. It's compromising mm. this vessel that I'm carrying the gift in and that I'm a conduit, right? And right? I'm jeopardizing my purpose. My purpose. I'm jeopardizing yeah. why I chose to come here and right. the work that I was called to do. That's it. Right. It affects mm. literally everything. That yeah. that ability to moment by moment mm. choose the higher choice, choose the higher awareness. Right. And all this takes practice. I'm not trying to overly simplify. Listen, oh. it is a journey. <laughs> All it the way a journey. journey. It is a, a journey. journey. It is a journey. And no one is wrong. And journey for and not grace. Knowing how to do all of that right yeah, away. Yeah, and yeah. journey and grace. Journey and grace all the way there. Because when you journey in grace and love yourself through it, like those days where you feel off in those days, you're like, I missed the mark. Like, yeah. They don't take you out. Yeah. It's like journey and grace. And you repair in real time. In real time. You don't have time. to, you know, you're not yes. avoiding things. There's not shame. Mm. It can just be like, yeah. I could have made a different choice and I didn't. Yeah. And I accept that. And now yeah. I'll co-create something else. Something else, right? And it, that's that. just hearing you say that feels so much lighter than mm. taking a week or two to like really be heavy and just burdened with this energy or this knowing yeah. of like, I missed the mark or it didn't happen like I th thought it should happen. Like when you can just say, okay, let me reconfigure. Let me be the chemist in the lab laboratory. Let me make some other things work. And it's like knowing how to shuffle things around and adapt that word you said earlier, mm -hmm. like that, that it literally is like adapting is just like the, that's the word for earth they gave us. They put that in you somewhere. So that unlocks something, <laughs> <laughs> different levels unlock when you remember, Listen. oh, I have to adapt, like adapt and adjust, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They use that in the military, adapt and adjust because it, it really is a form of survival. I feel like that is a superpower both of us have. Like we have high levels mm. of adaptability. Yeah. Like, and I think, you know, in something that we explore this a lot in our friendship and in conversations, and I think it's something I explore personally a lot as well, but the ability to also be at peace with the fact that there are very illogical circumstances that arise, that yeah. like life doesn't have to always be righteous, happy, good mm. to also be worthy. Mm. Um, and that's something that I feel really as I as I age, as I grow, especially, you know, as as a mother that is always looking through the facets of how do I translate this wisdom for my child in a way that's supportive to who he's becoming. Right. You know, it's like that's something I'm really grateful for. Like yeah. I can have a really good day on a bad day. Yeah. Um mm. It's like, it's this understanding we are constantly oscillating between yeah. grief and joy, between, mm -hmm. you know, 
challenge and freedom. We, it's all meant to be at play all the time. Yeah. And when you kind of just adapt to that or attune to that, yeah. you get to have like a more gentle sway as opposed to these really mm. hard rockings back and forth. Like it doesn't have to be, you know, the, the ship in <laughs> <laughs> the ship in, in these, you know, um, rocking against harsh waves yeah it can yeah. kind of just how can i glide down this river because yeah. it's gonna go anyway yeah you know all of this is gonna happen anyway yep. so how do i alleviate my suffering and right i think the way you express <sighs> it is so divine which is journey and grace journey and grace. journey and grace yeah you have to like i i if there was just one thing I could we like the last thing I ever wrote okay yeah <laughs> that's that's deep to say that's that's a lot to say but it would say journey and grace just because yeah. that that's everything like it helps yeah. you return to your lightness it helps you return home it helps you Oof. let go it helps you detach you know it helps you remember who you are that you're learning you're growing you're expanding and yeah. that's the beautiful thing about you know being on a level of learning and growing and ascending and transfiguring your life it's like, oh, there's going to be different levels I'm always going to be mm. learning into, leaning into, expanding, stretching, breaking into. And so, and sometimes nudge, sometimes thrown into, mm -hmm. you know, it, it can happen all kind of ways. And so, yeah, that grace is just, oh, it's medicine. It's, mm -hmm. it's just straight medicine. Because yeah. this earth school is never going to run short on lessons, everyone. That's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and always, always showing up to teach. Never a day off. <laughs> never, never a day, day off. off. Yeah. Layla, the way that I love to end each show is by providing a little bit of soul work for the audience that resonates mm -hmm. with this episode, something that they can deepen in. It could be an inquiry. It could be a practice. It could be a thought to savor, to chew on, and to explore until our next episode. Mm -hmm. So my dearest master teacher sister, I would love to ask, um, considering the conversation that we just had for mm -hmm. those that are connecting to the sound of our voice right now, what is something, what is an intention you'd like everyone to kind of deepen into over this next week or so? The intention that I would love for us to deepen into is to expand and expand in courage mm -hmm. and grace because you're going to need both. There's a lot of things shifting right now on the mm -hmm. planet and mm -hmm. It can feel like we're in a different universe and things don't feel the same. Mm. And this is supposed to happen. You know, ev mm -hmm. every every big shift, this happens. And the shift is not just in culture. The shift is internally. The shift is spiritual. The shift is cosmic. It's planetary, but it's also there's there's a lot of light coming we're moving through a photonic mm. belt. And so there's really, there's, there's a lot we're going through as a, literally as a planet, we're mm. getting more light onto the planet now. So those of us who have allowed ourselves to be sensitive are going to pick up on this. So this is going to cause us now to have to right now show up a little more in our lives with courage. Mm -hmm. Now that courage may tell you, I, you need courage to sit down. <laughs> like mm. you need courage to stop, to stop doing so much in your life. Right. And the person who resonates with that knows exactly what that is, right? Yeah. You're doing too much. Sit down and, and let mm. life, it's time for you to receive. It's time mm. for you to rest. It's time for you to heal, right? It's time for you to get out of the way. Mm. It's time for you now to be still so things can happen for you the way they need to only when you're still. For others of us, and I'm in this cl class, it's time to expand and do more and go. And there's certain codes that are going to be awakened and you're going to receive more in motion. You need to be in motion more for here and you need to expand in this. Mm. That right there is calling for courage. And courage is is important because fear a lot of times is the teacher, you know, when when we're, it's time for us to show up and do more or do less. Fear is telling us, well, you're not going to be as important if you're not speaking up and, you know, you're yeah. not going to be seen in your power if you're not doing as much or you're you're going to be judged if you're doing too much. So we have to be able to 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 tell fear to behave and we go forward. You know, yeah. we go forward with our gifts. We go forward with the with the lessons and journey and grace on the days that you don't get it. So really make a mantra and 
really live into that prayer every day of courage and grace, like what this looks yes. like for me in this moment. Um, courage to, to say yes and grace when I don't say yes or grace when I don't feel comfortable in it, knowing mm -hmm. that, you know, as I continue to move, that the flow, it's it's going to sync up with me. And, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, where I'm supposed to be, uh, I'll be guided there and expanded into that. But being obedient to spirit is just so important. And again, that word obedient, obedience, I say that in the most grandmotherly, loving, spiritual way <laughs> possible, um, is just obedience to your higher self, obedience to your creator, obedience to that beautiful gift that you carry, you know, and, and to that body that needs healing and rest, um, all of it. And that, that work in you that needs to go forth now, right? Mm -hmm. So obedience to all of it. Um, and just to say, yes, I'm saying yes to courage. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying yes to grace. You may want to take a deep inhale in and out there. And if that was really resonating, allow yourself to roll that over a couple times in your own body, with your own voice. I'm obedient to courage. I'm obedient to grace. My heart is open to receive guidance. Mm. Supernatural healing has made its way into my life. Mm. That was so beautiful. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, my beloved sweet sister. Thank mm. you so much for this conversation. Thank you so much thank for having you. me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I mean, mm. yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for everything that you were willing to share with us and for all the ways that I know it's just profoundly expanding everyone that heard your voice today. Mm. Wow. 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 Thank you. I know everyone knows where to find you, but head to Layla's Instagram at Layla Delia. Head to a bookstore near you if you haven't already, but I know most, more than likely you have this beautiful best-selling book, Vibrate Higher Daily. Um, wow. And you also have your community, the Vibrate yeah. Higher community. Yeah. So these things are really, I mean, I know some people listening right now are like, Yep, I know where my work is. Yeah. Really consider, you know, creating space that feels supportive um, yeah. to do that mm. and having more conversation with people that you resonate with. And maybe there are some terms that you heard us say on this show that it could be really worthy to dedicate an afternoon to some Google searches, to doing mm. some deep dives, to going into different forums, to going yeah. into different Instagram pages and just expanding your world and expanding yeah. what you know is possible for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Because we're guided, like that's, we're guiding each other home, you know? Yeah. So a, hearing, you know, overhearing a conversation, and that's mm. really what a podcast is. You're overhearing a conversation, mm. you know? And I was like, oh, those words, that word popped out. You know, write it down, meditate on it. Mm -hmm. And the more, mm -hmm. like that one word, like if you heard, and this is one thing I can say as a writer, is that pay attention to the words that, catch your attention. Because when you go read that word, that word is going to open up mm. a floodgate of other words mm. in a conversation um, that can turn into so, some medicine and answers. So yeah, definitely, definitely. I love that you said Google and, and research it, track it. Yeah. Yeah. Track it. Yeah. Track it. Please. Follow it and set yeah. intention for things to be revealed. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I love you. I love you <laughs> <laughs> so much. Oh, thank you so much for coming on the show. My honor, my honor. Thank you. Big love, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. We'll be back next week. Namaste. Mm -hmm.